Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and we love helping the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. Thank you for all your comments and questions that you guys have posted on our YouTube channel. After reading them all and answering as many as possible, I've selected five that we're gonna include in today's Q&A video. Each of these individuals I have selected will receive a complimentary pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces as a token of our appreciation for their participation in our channel. In today's Q&A video, we're gonna be talking about bespoke tailoring. Our first question today is from Michael Fisher. Uh, Michael, it's nice to hear from you again. Michael is one of our regular uh, commenters on this channel and someone I think that I've even communicated with uh, over email several times. Uh, so Michael, great to hear from you. His question was on the Gary Talk interview that we filmed at the World Championship of Shoe Shining in London. And his question reads, thanks Kirby, a very interesting gentleman, Gary Talk. I've enjoyed hearing what he had to say about suit tailoring. I'm looking for a good tailor in Texas. To start with, I need a couple of blazers, sport coats, then a suit. Um, I'm going this route because they can fit me with something for our climate, as you did mention, which I'm glad you and Mr. Talk did discuss. Uh, so, uh, Michael, uh, great question. It's a little bit difficult in Texas just because we don't really have any bespoke tailors that are based here, uh, but we are fortunate that we do have many very talented bespoke and made to measure uh, tailors that do travel through Texas. So if you're looking to go the bespoke route, uh, Leonard Longstale and Huntsman both travel extensively through Texas. Uh, I believe they both hit Austin, Houston, uh, in Dallas, relatively easy to catch. Leonard Longstale is based in New York and has uh, all his stuff made uh, off the row in London. Uh, and then of course you have Huntsman, which just opened their New York cutting room, which is allowing them uh, to offer an incredibly high level of service to their American clientele. It's actually really exciting and quite groundbreaking. They're the first Savile Row bespoke tailoring house to have a full-time dedicated cutter based here in America. And what that allows is just more access to your cutter than what you would have with a traveling tailor that's just traveling to, through uh, Texas or America twice a year. So if you're looking to go full bespoke, I can recommend Leonard Longstale and Huntsman. Now, if you don't wanna do full bespoke, there's two great made to measure tailors that do travel quite extensively through Texas also. Angel Ramos, uh, whom we've just released a series of videos on, uh, and then a coast, um, and then of course, Joe Hammerjohnny with MyTailor.com. Now Joe Hammerjohnny is incredibly talented, a dear close friend, and my gray flannel suit was actually made by Hammerjohnny, and it's one of the best suits I own. So I could absolutely recommend both of them. You know, the suit that I have from Hammerjohnny is a made to measure suit, but the finishing details really is almost bespoke quality. And I believe their highest grade, uh, really the highest level of handwork is like a $22 or $2,500 suit, which is actually very reasonable for the product that you get. So Michael, in choosing a bespoke tailor, you know, one of the most important things is really to ensure that you have uh, access to them. Uh, because if it's a bespoke tailor that's traveling to the United States once or twice a year, uh, and you know, your schedules don't align, uh, then it can take you know, 18 months to have your first garment made. And so that's what I like about you know, both Leonard Longstale and Huntsman. Uh, they both travel through Texas two to three times a year, uh, but you can also visit them in New York uh, for additional fittings if you really need to speed up uh, the process. Now, if you're looking between a, uh, a blazer or a sports coat, you know, uh, I would recommend taking, uh, I'd recommend considering a navy blazer with dark horn buttons, incredibly versatile and probably one of the first pieces that I would have made bespoke. And if you're new to bespoke, you could actually have one of your first suits be a navy suit, and then you could use the jacket uh, as a navy sports coat uh, with an odd pair of trousers. You know, Michael, I hope this helps you in your search uh, for a bespoke tailor, and please make sure you keep us posted uh, as to who you choose and how that process goes. In the meantime, I look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Great Shoe Laces. Our second question is from uh, Pietro Marchesini, and it reads, uh, yet another great video, Kirby. I have a question about dress shirt laundry. How do you cope with yellow deodorant sweat stains under the armpits or inside the collar? I've tried several low and high end cloths, ready to wear and made to measure, but never bespoke. And my white shirts all get those frustrating stains after only a few months of wear. How long do your Charvet shirts last? And do you have any tricks to keep them crisp and clean? Do you wear undershirts? And if so, which ones do you recommend? 
Pietro, great question. Uh, you know, it's impossible to really avoid uh, sweat stains under the armpits and the collars. Uh, it's just a natural uh, byproduct of wearing clothing, uh, but you can treat those. We have several products here at The Hanger Project. Uh, first, we have a stain bar that we sell from the laundress that is really good for scrubbing uh, cuffs, collars, uh, and under the armpits to help remove those stains. And so what I would recommend is using the stain bar, uh, scrubbing the collars, maybe even with a, um, a horsehair brush or something to really get in there, uh, and then letting the shirt soak in water before you wash it. Also, if you're sending your shirts to a really good dry cleaners, like here in the United States, we have Rave Fabric Care, whom I send all of my Charvet shirts to, a really high-end luxury dry cleaner is going to scrub all your cuffs and collars to really treat those stains, and that'll help prolong and extend the life of any great dress shirt. The problem that you're experiencing really has nothing to do about the fabric. I mean, the fabric doesn't stain itself, and as long as it's 100% natural cotton, uh, it's all going to react to your body the same. It really just comes down to how much you perspire and how well you're laundering your shirts as to whether or not those stains persist. Now, if you're really focusing on scrubbing the cuffs and collars or you're using a great dry cleaners like Ray Fabric Care, uh, then the lifetime of a shirt like one of my Charvet shirts uh, could easily be five, 10, or even more years. If you're having bespoke shirts made, you can even have your cuffs and collars replaced after they begin to wear, which can uh, further extend the lifetime of the shirt. And this is actually where banker shirts came from, where you'd have a striped shirt body, but with white cuffs and collars. The whole entire idea was to allow cuffs and collars to be replaced since those were the first to wear out. A great question, Pietro, and I look forward to sending you a pair of our sovereign grade shoelaces, and good luck removing those stains on your shirts. Our third question today is from Ryan Cook. His question reads, Kirby, what is your opinion on lapel vest? Also, fabric back or satin backed? You know, Ryan, I love vests, uh, especially a double breasted vest is incredibly elegant. Uh, and you'll probably have seen that on my stroller, I have a beautiful baby blue double breasted uh, six button vest uh, that I absolutely love wearing. The beauty of a vest is that it can really change the look of a suit. You know, without a vest, it's slightly dressed down, uh, but the moment that you put a vest on, especially a beautiful double breasted vest, uh, it really elevates the formality of that ensemble and just creates something that's incredibly elegant. Uh, I think lapels on a vest, again, further elevate uh, just the sophistication of a vest. So you'll see uh, that on my stroller, it has lapels, uh, and I'd love to have some additional vest made for that stroller in particular. On the Stark and Sons piece that I'm having made from Comps de Luca, uh, it's a beautiful, just simple navy fabric. I'm having it made as a double-breasted jacket and a single-breasted jacket, uh, but also with a uh, just standard vest uh, and a double-breasted vest so that I can mix and match. So uh, absolutely yes on the vests. Now regarding the backing, on a satin back, uh, it's just gonna wear cooler than a fabric-backed vest. So on all of my vests, uh, I have satin backs. Ryan, a great question. Let us know if you're having any suits made with vests. You know, maybe take a photograph and tag us on Instagram uh, so that we can see it. Uh, in the meantime, I look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Grid shoelaces. Our fourth question today is from Thomas Nietman on our uh, Kirby Allison's favorite tie video. And it reads, first of all, lovely collection. Thank you. Uh, I'm quite uh, envious. I have a question not related to this topic, but one I took uh, a close look at your shirt during the video, it caught my attention. When you stand or sit without moving, your jacket collar lies uh, tightly against your shirt. However, in certain situation, a collar gap is visible that is not a flattering look. I'm wondering if this is avoidable. I found that with all my jackets, once I move my arms up to a certain degree, the jacket and shirt collar uh, lose contact, creating a gap. Can you elaborate on this matter? Uh, Thomas, great question. So uh, most properly, a, a well-fitting jacket should not have any gap in between the collar of the jacket and the shirt. But you know, if you move around a little bit, it's possible for the jacket uh, to really become unseated from the collar and for a gap to show. Now the easiest thing to do is to just you know, take your jacket and just kind of reset it on the, on the collar and that'll help eliminate uh, that gap. 
Uh, so with something that you're buying off of the rack, you know, sometimes it's really difficult to find a jacket that fits without that gap between the collar uh, of the jacket and the collar of the shirt. And that just comes down to the fact that anytime you're buying something ready to wear, it's cut off of a standard pattern uh, that isn't really tailored to your specific body stance. So if you're trying on a ready to wear jacket that has a collar gap, uh, either try a different size uh, or just try a different brand that probably is cut a little bit differently and maybe that'll take care of the problem. But even with my bespoke jackets, you know, sometimes you'll see that as I'm sitting down and, you know, moving my arms around, you know, sometimes a collar gap will form and it's, you know, it's just, you know, slightly unavoidable. But I always try to readjust and kind of adjust my jacket so that that disappears. Thanks, Thomas, for your question. Uh, we really appreciate your participation on this YouTube channel. Uh, and I look forward to sending you a pair of our Simon Gray shoelaces. And if you have any photographs, you know, please tag us on Instagram so we can see what that jacket looks like. Our last question today is from a Jerry Covington. Uh, it's on our Q&A 4 video and it reads, Hi Kirby, I'm getting started on this journey of fine men's apparel. What in your recommendation would be the best starting point? Would you start with a pair of dress shoes, casual clothing, or a custom suit? You know, so Jerry, great question. It's hard to give you a very specific answer without knowing more about your lifestyle and how you dress. You know, whether or not you work in an office where you're expected to wear uh, a suit and tie every day, or, or whether or not, uh, you know, you could be a doctor wearing scrubs during the day and you just want something nicer to wear on the weekend. All those factors really change how I would approach uh, beginning to grow uh, or invest in a high quality wardrobe. But I can share a little bit of my own personal experience. Uh, for me, whenever I was younger, I found that I got the most bang for my buck or value out of nice shoes and nice dress shirts. It's what I was wearing most often. I could wear a nice pair of shoes with a suit. I could also wear a nice pair of shoes with jeans on the weekend. Same thing with my dress shirts. I could wear a nice dress shirt uh, to the office, but I could also wear a nice dress shirt out at night. I found that investing in a, a few a high quality pairs of dress shoes and a few nice dress shirts is what allowed me to start dressing nicer uh, for the least amount of money. The other benefit of shoes and shirts is that of all the things that you could buy bespoke or even uh, made to measure, uh, they're really the least expensive and therefore the most accessible. So the first things that I had made uh, were dress shirts. I started buying nice dress shoes, certainly not bespoke. Uh, and then I invested in a few nice suits. Now in approaching nice suits, my absolute recommendation would be to focus uh, on the most simple, uh, elegant fabric. So my first bespoke suit was a dark charcoal with a really small herringbone in it. It was incredibly simple and elegant, and it was something that I could wear during the day, at night, to work, to a funeral, to a wedding. Uh, so again, it wasn't something uh, that really was gonna stand out. It wasn't uh, crazy, it wasn't like a window pane or a gun club, but it was something that was elegant and could be uh, very versatile. Absolutely, the first two suits that any gentleman should invest in is a dark gray or charcoal suit and a navy blue and plain fabrics, no window panes, no checks, uh, because these are the most versatile suits that any man can own. You can wear them at night, you can wear them during the day, you can wear them to a wedding, you can wear them to a funeral. Um, so if you're gonna start anywhere, that is uh, for a fact where I would recommend starting. And there's no man alive that doesn't look great in either a dark gray or a navy blue suit and a white shirt. Uh, that is absolutely a fact. Thank you, Jerry, for your question. I look forward to sending you a pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces. And make sure you post pictures on Instagram and tag us of anything that you might buy. Once again, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for their comments and questions. It's your engagement on our YouTube channel that make these Q&A videos possible. Not only does it give me an opportunity to answer in greater depth a lot of the questions that I'm already answering when you ask them in the comments section, but it allows us to take a moment to just acknowledge our appreciation of you being a part of our channel. I've absolutely enjoyed how this platform has allowed us to connect with you guys. If you haven't taken an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment, I invite you to do so. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, just sharing your opinion or your thoughts about our content helps us make better videos for you in the future. In today's video, I'm wearing one of my bespoke Chris Despis suits. This is a, a, a navy or a blue a fresco suit with patch pockets. I'm wearing a bespoke Charvet shirt, of course, in my trademark white, along with one of our sovereign grade uh, regimental uh, rep ties. 
Of course, like all my suits, these have tab trousers, uh, which I really enjoy for just the simplicity and, and the elegance. The trousers are uncuffed, and I have a pair of our small dot Palatino socks that beautifully match uh, this suit. Uh, and then today I'm wearing a pair of my St. Crispin's uh, Capto Oxfords uh, that are dark brown. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications by clicking the bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. If you have any questions or comments about anything we discussed on this video, please ask them in the comments section below. And of course, please visit hangerproject.com where we have the largest, most comprehensive collection of luxury garment care and shoe care accessories in the world, as well as many other incredible products for the well-dressed. And while you are there, subscribe to our newsletter to receive notifications of new product launches, promotions, as well as a weekly digest of all the videos we publish here on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison, and we love to help the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes. Thanks for joining us.